All right, let's go, man. Let's freaking go. Because it's been... <laughs> can, can I be honest with you, dude? Uh, you know, the partnership right now in video is a little bit iffy. And one of its best perks is having access to the partner channel. So I can see you rant on a daily. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, right? Like... <sighs> I mean, at least I'm trying, like, I don't think PA is going to change their stance, right? But if like, I at least go like, okay, well, if I don't say what's wrong, then they will never fix it. For real, for uh, real. Now, uh, welcome back to the channel, man. It's it's great to do another, another uh, session, specifically PvP-oriented with you. Last one was really cool. Today, man, it's been it's been rough for the PvP community, and I'm not the best representative of it, to be fair. I kind of suck in video PvP, but still passionate to the extent in which I could be. Um, so just before we start, give yourself an introduction for the people that do not know, and we'll begin with uh, the discussion. Hello, hello, my name is Jason. I've been playing Valkyrie for about six years or more by now, Node War and Siege for five years or longer, and participated in every arena of Solar season, made a top 100 every single time. So decent PvP experience to bring to the table. Absolutely. One of the best, man. One of the best. I think you have like two or three accounts now, I think. Something like this. Uh, yeah, I've played on two this season mainly. Mm -hmm. Had two last season. Yeah, yeah damn. I so you're, this, uh... you're always in that top list for Valkyrie. Are you going to get uh, the season... Was it Valkyrie God or whatever it is the, the title? The Greatest Valkyrie? Uh, well, you sadly don't get it for playing Arena or so, uh, like the rank mm -hmm. 1 rewards uh, for the classes, like the statue in the battle arena. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't uh, sadly manage to do that. Uh, next time, man, next time, you know. I, I, I'm sure you're, you're going you're gonna to improve and if they release another season of Solaire, <laughs> that's going to be on your goal, probably. It's probably going to be like half a year or something until then, but uh, we shall try our best. <laughs> now, I, I'm a little bit guilty, man, when it comes to trash-talking Arena of Solaire. It's like, you know... Um, I've last... it. <laughs> You've read it, man. <laughs> You've, read oh, it. I read it, yeah. You've read it for sure, man. The partner chat is a great place, I'm not going to lie. It's super sad that, you know, regular viewers in the Discord have no access to it because you're going to see some stuff there, man. <laughs> But, um, you know, Arena of Solaire, dude, it, it's, it's the first topic of conversation that we'll be carrying on today. Um, you know, I, ever since AOS came through, the very first season, I was, I, I was hooked on the very first season. And, man, it, it died out for me because of how, at least in my opinion, poorly the system itself, not what's happening with the maps and balance, was, uh, was done. And in a typical PA fashion, they fixed the system, kind of. And then they introduce new sets of issues, which totally destroy the mode once more. And it's like season two. And then Land of the Morning Light Map, you know, which was... I think that got removed like mid-season or something like this, maybe? Uh, there was two different ones. There was one in the Bamboo Forest that caused you to have about 15 to 20 <laughs> FPS yeah. on average. That got removed like one or two weeks in, I believe. That got hot fixed out. And then there was a second one which took place in one of the palaces or whatever it was like a house map and had yeah two ap buff spawn no it it was one ap buff only spawn i believe um and that one i'm not sure if it got removed mid-season or after the season and until the next one but it also got removed fairly yeah. fast because people yeah. expected a lot of disappointment or like expressed a lot of disappointment to that. In, indeed it's 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 super funny to see the Pearl Abyss decision making when it comes to maps. It's like, oh, this is one of our favorite thing that we did from this piece of content. Let's put it as a map without thinking of anything that might go sideways with it. And you see this in particular, you know, the Bamboo Legion map. Um, as far as I remember, there was also an issue with uh, the FPS, even in the outside world. And they just copied a broken piece and put it in AOS. <laughs> it's yeah basically what they did and the house thing with so many places you could clip hide from damage particles and everything that was happening with it man it, it's ridiculous and ever since then i i'm just done with aos i haven't played a single game and i do not plan on playing a single game it's just coming from world of warcraft if any of the viewers know world of warcraft we know what 3v3 arena should look like and aos ain't it man unless it's an upgrade to that or as good as it is it's just not working for us, at least speaking from my uh, from my experience. And I have plenty of World of Warcraft PvP and let's say 3v3 experience. So, Jason, man, 
what happened this season? What happened this season, man? It seems like it's uh, a it's a shit show, isn't it? It's like the worst it's, it's ever been. been. It's been a rough road. I'm not sure if I would say it's necessarily the worst, but there's been some some mistakes from from Perla beside. I would say that have not been happening the last seasons at least. Um, I'm gonna start off with one thing that is good and bad at the same time. Um, they brought out a huge balance patch like two three weeks ago, right? So like yeah. roughly four to four weeks into the season, so like slightly past the halfway mark of the season, they brought in a huge balance patch that changed the dynamic of. Awakening Dracania, for example, Heart Fell Off was one of the, the best classes in mm-hmm. there. Is mm-hmm. now not unplayable, but the, be- the best players on it swapped to a different class, Awakening Nova. Um, Succession Berserker got changed, not really nerfed. Awakening Heart gutted after that patch. Awakening Valkyrie, so my class personally got uh, hit really, really hard. Um, and some other classes got buffed by it. Striker, for example. Yeah. Um, one of the major complaints the past seasons was that the seasons every single season was largely dominated by one spec or class so in the first season it was succession dracania and the second one it was succession megu and the third one it was awakening dracania and the entire season nothing happened about it like it was clear that this one class dominated the entire arena and nothing happened so this season they bring out a huge balance patch which by itself would be like hey this is really good right they listen to the feedback there's one issue with it though um and that is the dk system of how you lose points when you're high elo already so they brought it out when the major or a good amount of people were already past the 2200 elo mark so mm-hmm. there was a lot of people that already had the solar incarnate which is 2400 points for the people that don't know um and a lot of people had like 2200 plus i would say the top 100 mark at that point was 2050 2100 roughly like that um and the dk system how it works is that you only lose uh, after you didn't play for three days. So if I hmm. play on the third day a single match, which even if I lose, I lose 25 points for it, um, <clears throat> then I have another three days of needing to play. So if every three days I play one match, I lose it, let's say, I lose yeah. 25 points every three days. If I just don't play at all, I l- on the highest ranking on Solar Incarnate, you lose 50 points per day. That is a six times difference. Yeah. And I basically get rewarded for when in doubt, running down my team and just inting it for minus 25 <laughs> points instead of not playing which is i mean they didn't run it down right but a lot of the yeah, people yeah. before the balance patch just played really high on their accounts you could one of the specific examples i have in my mind for example is the the valkyrie rankings um the, the rank one valkyrie this season had about 2300 before the balance patch and only played the dk matches every three days so he played like four or five matches since that balance patch and on his main account he kept spamming games like me and his main account is like 400 ELO lower than his alt account now. And they were the same ELO before. Oh my. So in theory, you see the impact of the balance patch made the class a lot weaker. He lost like 300, 400 ELO, just like me as well. But since he didn't have to play a lot of games, he played four or five matches since that change. He still kept the really, really high ELO and is now the rank one Valkyrie, which by all means he's a good player, right? It's just other players that also played like lost less and stuff right and it's not me being salty about it i'm like rank five yeah. or something i'm nowhere near it's perfectly fine but you see the dynamic issue between there and the same also goes with how um the classes like that there's no separate ranking for classes so quizash for example is yeah has the rank one dracania title right now and is the rank one overall but he has to rank one dracania the thing is since the balance patch he didn't play a single match on dracania he played awakening nova he has like 50 matches on awakening nova done since the yeah since the balance patch, but he gets the rank 1 Dracania title because he has just more matches done on Dracania, right? Because the yeah. DK system in itself just requires you to play at 10 matches per season or something to not DK, which is that's so super weird. low compared to the 500 matches that people play. That's so weird. So basically, this is also one thing which I've heard uh, from my fellow guildmates at the time, uh, especially people who are playing in AOS. It's like they pull out a crazy balance patch and as you just said, with this DK system, which they've uh, implemented, is this from this season or last season? When when was this put out? The DK system itself was implemented one or two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. They massively changed it this season, though, so it's way harsher. Last season, we had to play once per week on on the 2100 mark and once per two weeks on the 1800 mm-hmm. marks. And now it's every three days, basically. So, like, mm-hmm. they made it a lot you have to play a lot more, but it is still way too less compared to the amount of points you lose for just not playing. Exactly, yeah. 
So this this was a thing which I heard, um, and when I heard about it, it, it was actually one of the questions which we were about to tackle. It's it's so weird. First and foremost, you introduce a patch which changes the dynamic entirely, and the DK system is not strong enough to address what happened with that balance patch because you would expect the DK system to be strong enough so that whatever happened would simply switch in terms of dynamics. So let's just say they nerfed Dracania, as you said they do, and the DK system is not strong enough to result into the meta change be also put into the rankings from you know top to bottom. And one of the things which people uh, in my guild were talking about is how they instantly stop queuing AOS up until just for the 1DK game, and then they just leave it. And not only that, when you re-roll, because of how much, as you said, you've committed to your original class, it's a family thing. So it's like, what happens afterwards on the rewards level? It's, it's, a, very interesting, it's a very interesting conversation, but overall, it seems like, you know, aside of... What's happening with, first and foremost, balance, then we're talking about the DK, then we're talking about how much points people accumulate in the meanwhile. There was a lot of bugs, and there was a lot of issues. There was a lot of people dropping underneath maps. Whatever T-posing is, which happened recently, and let us know what happened, man. What happened with these bugs? What was, um, what was the issue? Yeah, so the thing with vacuuming people below the map, or like people being stuck under the map, has been since forever i would say any map that has elevation if you're playing against classes with a vacuum so mystic valkyrie um nova valkyrie and specifically because it has the largest area vacuum like it pulls you the first distance in um it has about if i had to guess a 20 percent chance on the ruins of soil map that if you encounter a valkyrie one of your team's mates is gonna get stuck <laughs> under the map there's about a 20 percent chance <laughs> that in like the three or five rounds one round you will have somebody stuck under the map oh. you can also get stuck in the map like in the walls there happened to me i got knocked Backed into the map, into the wall and stuff. Mystic and Strikers get stuck very often. Shift F spell, um, like in in the in the walls and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a quite common thing. <laughs> the, the the larger issue. I mean, people are used to it by now. We've had it for four seasons. The the larger issue that happened in the last week now is the T posing that you mentioned. I can send you some clips later if you want, so you can like <laughs> sure, sure, in, please do. Uh, for the audience to see what happens basically is your enemy just like stand still or T poses as the like name says, right? And has yeah. no animations. He just teleports around in this T pose. You cannot see what he does. You cannot see a single spell. No it's telegraphing, like nothing. An invisible enemy. I cannot see if he's CC'd. I cannot see if he uses a protection. I cannot <laughs> see if he uses a grab. I see only a T posing enemy teleporting around. It's playing against an invisible enemy. And if that class is like an awakening Nova <laughs> striker or something, how do you dodge it, right? Like how do you dodge a striker walking up to you and grabbing you if you don't see him? It's not possible. <laughs> so it's an insta lose. That round is an insta lose for you, basically. And the worst part is, and that is like sometimes it happens and sometimes not. It would not reset until the player dies. And since oh, you were no. basically guaranteed to lose the round because you cannot fight the player, chances are very high he's not going to die. And then I've had it plenty of times that just next round he would still T-pose until he died. <laughs> Sometimes it worked out for some reason. Nobody knows, right? Sometimes after yeah. the round reset. I think it's a loading screen thing. I I'm not entirely sure. But like, basically, if they win the round, they all run back to spawn so they don't get a loading screen. And then he's just going to T-pose the next round and then you lose this round again, right? So it's... a almost guaranteed loss of at least one to two rounds if not even the entire match that would randomly occur with like no indicator of what causes it nobody knows it happened yeah. to all classes throughout the game it happened at random times mid-match it didn't have to be first match it could be like like in the second or third round nobody knows and it's still not fixed to this day um, and there's no estimated time until it's fixed and the biggest frustration with that is like I mean, obviously, everyone gets affected about the same because there's a random percentage chance it happens, right? So on mm -hmm. average, everyone suffers from it. But it's still weird to me personally that in a competitive game mode, which AOS is supposed to be the most competitive game mode the game has to offer, um, they would let the rankings be finalized with in the, bug. the last <laughs> week with an almost unplayable game state because I've, I've had so many complaints about that. I would say as well, there's like a 20 to 30% chance this is going to happen in your game. <laughs> and that is combined with all the other issues going on. Yeah. A pretty wired game state to be in. As you said, people like in the top 50 only play the DK matches. Like, because you would, it's a guarant to lose Edo in the last week. You just don't play the game mode last week. For sure. For sure. It's, it's ridiculous when I read about this because um, also the recent camera bug. I'm not sure if that affects it way too much in AOS. Okay. 
It, it does. I'm just chilling right now. For example, I'm in high Dell and all of a sudden my camera would zoom out <laughs> and then zoom in and then fix it. At least moving with the mouse helps it, but still probably that is also affecting. But, um, you know, man, it's it's ridiculous. And as you said, uh, without, you know, crossing any NDAs in the partner chat or anything, but this is totally worthy for an extension. Just totally worthy for an extension. Just just fix the entire thing. Make sure that this, that this doesn't happen. Make sure it's playable for the sakes of playability. Extend it and, and, and just have people be adequately ranked in places without the RNG of whoops, bad game design appearing, you know? I would have personally said that I don't know how possible that is to Perlibus, right? I'm no software engineer myself, but after one or two days where the Perlibus devs knew about it and deemed it to not be hotfixable, right? Because we've been asking for hotfix, they said they can't, they're working on it. I'm not sure why we just didn't get basically on Friday, let's say on the patch was Thursday, right? So on Friday or Saturday, why we didn't just get a roll back to the version that we had until Thursday, right? Because we didn't get a crazy change this week. Yeah. There was nothing like crazy impacting new stuff coming to the game, a new region or something that they could roll back. It was like, okay, something happened. Um, so that would be nice to see. Or if they can't do that for some reason because they deleted the old game files or whatever it is, I don't know. Could you imagine? Um, then as said, yeah, just the moment it's fixed, like basically pause the season. I mean, you could either pause it or let it run, I guess, and yeah. just like ex extend it by a week or two, however long it takes to fix it. Because playing like that in about seven and a half years of BDO, I have not been that frustrated with the game as the last week. I can tell that because we've known each other for quite some time so far. And I've never, you're genuinely a super positive guy, like just well over the top, upbeat dude. And seeing you crumble, I imagine what other people have, man. I mean, AOS gets the better of everyone, but it's more the fact that, like, usually I tend to go, like, hey, you know, like, the NA and U team, they're doing great, right? It's chaos for it. You know, <laughs> it's not in their hands, right? What can they do? They are powerless. <laughs> but in the past weeks, it felt a little bit left down by them. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, that's a different topic to talk about. Unacceptable! Still, like, it's been a very, should... <laughs> very frustrating game stage for PvP player sides. Oh, man, I, I feel you, I feel you. It's, it's, you know, seeing this, you know, you would expect if something like this occurs, if somebody is complaining a little bit for, you, for, for that person to be almost alone in a sense, but seeing everyone complain about it, forums blowing up about it reddit on fire for it discord is on fire for it people are asking me about it i don't know what the hell is happening <laughs> i just don't play it right so obviously it's taking a centerpiece in this entire let's just say it, pvp situation in video right now man it it feels like shambles and i think the best way to describe it is in shambles because no pvp in video right now has any worth it doesn't feel playable it, it just, it truly does feel lacking, to say the least. And, you know, with the AOS conversation, just so we conclude this while we move into the second piece, it's just, man, I've said it on my very second video on this channel over two and a half years ago was why Arena of Solaire will not work the way it is. Everything that I said in that was addressed and... Then I say why the maps on my second video for AOS, why the maps for AOS will not work and that doesn't get addressed. And it seems like PA don't care. It feels to me like when they introduce everything that they do, they don't test it, they don't get a team, okay, is it working, is it functional? They kind of do it on the top of their dome just for the sakes of you guys not being pissed that there wasn't an AOS season for a year and what, two months? I think it was two months, something like that. Uh it's been i think it wasn't exactly a year i thought i forgot one of the seasons in between but it was like nine months plus at least yes <sighs> it's been a very long time since the last one it's it's ridiculous it truly is ridiculous to see the attitude which they put out considering how first they advertise it very hard second you know they glorified it exceptionally well because let's be honest, the rewards are neat for the first people out there that are to be representative of their classes. Outfits, sure, kind of redundant nowadays, but still, you get the idea. It's exciting. It's very exciting. And negligence. Negligence is synonymous with Arena of Solar. It's, it's how I like to describe it constantly on, onto the stream. But let's move into a very interesting topic, and that's the nodes. The nodes. I kind of... 
be, before we move into that i'm not oh, sure yeah. if you want to keep the earth thing going but there's like one or two more things that come for sure mind. please by all means by all means yes, yes, yes. Um, so for the whole map thing that you that you mentioned that would be a, like the current map selection outside of one or two is pretty fine and in in general for pa's map decisions I am not sure why we just don't get a simple ban system that each team can ban one map because it gives PA free data on what maps are hated. And yes. I can guarantee you that the Ruins of Soil map, the one that has the DP buff, the AP buff, the Wind buff, and the Block debuff, yes. it's going to have a 99% ban rate. <laughs> Nobody likes that one. It, it's free data for Perlobis to see which maps are liked or disliked by the community. And it gives the community the choice of, hey, I really don't like that map. I will never play it in my life and I'm going to be a happy player and you get data this map is bad. Yeah, so absolutely. that would be a very nice, simple thing to do, for example, to fix the entire thing. But has been suggested a hundred times and it's not happening, sadly. Um, another thing, though, that's something that is annoying in AOS is it's the most competitive game what the game has to offer currently. So obviously people are prone to using everything in their power to win, and that might be include abusing certain uh, certain bugs or techniques or something, right? Yeah. And the issue of that is, or like the biggest issue of that is, it's very blatant, obvious, and you have people streaming them bug abusing and stuff because yes. there's no fear of any sense of punishment because Perlibus, the, the, they banned people a single time for boosting accounts for the tournament they had last season. That was the only time people ever got punished in Arena of Soda. And it just leaves the mentality to people of, oh, there's a bug going on. I'm just going to abuse the living hell out of it because I know nothing's going to happen to me. And we've had the V-sniffing bug where if you open the Pearl Shop, for example, or the, yes. or the skill window, you could see where the Vs are going, right? Heard and you it. had people stream on Twitch doing that with no fear of getting punished, and they didn't get punished. Yep. And, or like people openly admit to it, right? And there was no no fear of punishing. And they're right, so nobody punished it. So basically, as somebody that would be scared of losing their account or like a, a PA partner or a streamer or something, right? Like you were in the disadvantage of going like, hey, I, I can't stream me abusing this or I don't want to <laughs> abuse it. Even if you're just an honorable player, you don't want to abuse it. Yeah. You just didn't queue for the two days where it was in the game. You just straight up didn't play the game mode because everyone else was going to abuse it. And you knew you would lose because of it. Because if you, do, if you V and you're going to get sniffed, you're dead, right? So you knew you were at a disadvantage. And I don't like the mentality of, oh, there's no punishment happening anyways. So I would like PA to maybe like enforce their own TOS into AOS if it's that obvious that it's Ab getting abused. Absolutely. I I've heard about both of these things and I think I know why they're not punishing players. First, I think it's very important to say that a lot of why Arena of Solaire is not well designed as a system is because there lacks the player pool to execute specific things. And I'm pretty confident that whenever you grab and let's just say, I'm not sure if the rank one person did this or whatever, but you get just to use a, specifically a rank one position, not the person in particular right now, just to avoid any drama. If that person does it, you know that person has three more, four more accounts. So you, you're killing literally the topper echelon of the bracket. You're just like smacking it outside. So I'm not saying that I'm backing PA, but they, they should have at the very least, you know, do a 24 hour ban off of cures or something, anything. Of course, don't ban the person indefinitely up until the ending of oh, yeah. of Solaire. But yeah, anything, I anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never asked for an indefinite ban of the account or something, but what yeah, they yeah. did, for example, last season with the with the boosting of accounts for like the tournament they had, right? What they did was they basically restricted that person's account of only Arena of Solar for the end of the season. That's not like mm. it's perfectly fine because yep. ninety percent of these accounts only play for Arena of Solar, so then they basically worthless, right? And then even if like your main main goal is like you can still play the game normally, you just can't keep working for your ass anymore, and then basically the leak system is gonna take care of all of you either way, right? right? Even even if it's not not at the end of the season, just last just a week or two back then or something, mm -hmm. takes away so, so much of the rain already. Exactly. Mind, like really, really hard. like it's it's a big punishment. If you get banned for one week in the top one hundred AOS. You lose at least, uh, what is it, like 120 points, if not 150 or more. If you can't play like the next yeah, day. Yeah, after the third yeah. day, it starts kicking in for four. So you get, yeah. uh, it's 50 points per, per day, right? Something like that. Uh, it depends on your rank. It's 40 um, points for the one below. So then like, yeah, if it's yeah. four days more, it's like 160 points that you lose at least, which is 
a huge amount of that's, game. Like, that's a, it takes people days or weeks to get back. Good punishment. Because, that's a good punishment in my eyes. It, it's pretty much... It, it's not a prolonged account restriction. Yet for how little it is, you get punished a lot for this. That, that's a perfect suggestion, to be fair. In my opinion, this, this would work. And just to go back when I said, you know, banning one person and his accounts... You know, uh, just I understand that you know people are making separate accounts. They're not playing with different characters, so on and so forth. Um, just to make sure that people people get that. So um, we done with the AOS stuff. Do you feel like you need to add anything else? Anything on your mind? Uh, Maybe some rant on the end of it. Nah, I mean, I, I'd say one more thing, but that's a lot harder to track, right? Like the sure. level of abusing and stuff was very easy to track. I would say compared. <laughs> um, there's also win trading going on, especially in the last days and stuff, where people try to secure the top 100 spots and. The people that play it know the names of the ones that are doing it. It's obviously a lot harder to put evidence up, though, that, oh, these one or two players are, ob like, really win trading for PA to take punishments against it, right? So this is a lot more annoying to deal with, or, like, harder to deal with. Mm -hmm. But sadly, it is happening, and it makes sense, because, yeah, as I said, you get rewards for being a top 100 player, so people will do it, especially now with the event coming up where you have to be top 100 to get in. Um, but yeah, there's not much PA can do about that one, sadly. Maybe, like, if people, or, like, if there's a lot of people reporting a specific person, they could at yeah. least have a look into it and, like, spectate one or two of the matches and see if something fishy is going on. But you can always say somebody has a bad game. Happens. For sure. You know, as long as it's not them staying at spawn, which is the most stupid way to win trade, you know? <laughs> Just like, I'm staying at spawn, this is the win trade that you get. But, wow. you know, man, win trading is a huge thing. Even in uh, the biggest esports games right now, you you almost see, not sure if you follow League of Legends. Um, yeah, the Mafia. It, <laughs> it's insane, it's insane. Especially, I think it was two or three seasons ago, the first, the, the second team, which was about to compete with the number one team at the time, which was Chinese, performed spot on, no mistakes, versus the Chinese team, crumbled like nothing, games concluding fast, and you almost, you, you're seeing it in front of your eyes, so, you know, win trading is mafia, as you said, the best well said, man, it's mafia, and it also dedicates, it, sorry, it needs a lot of resources dedicated to prove it, you gotta have somebody out there who is aware of, pure, of in, you know, Pearl Abyss, who is aware of how things play out and how should play out, and let's be honest, they probably don't have that guy in there. This is a lot harder uh, for like, sure to track compared to like the the V-sniff bug abuse and stuff like that, or punishing, uh, boosting, or like account sharing and stuff. Like this is rather easy to track, especially for the people that play it. Um, but like you can ask anyone in the top 100, they can tell you everyone, like, all of the top 100, everyone knows who's whose account and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so this is a lot easier to go on than doing trading. But just wanted to mention it for the sake sure, of the sure. list being fulfilled. For sure. That's a that's a good list. So, to be fair, win trading is probably, they won't do anything about it, to be fair. But for the, for the other things, I'm pretty sure that, you know, if you tackle the people who abuse the system in terms of bugs and stuff, probably you'll catch a fair number of people that win trade as well. So maybe a little bit of that chain is going to translate. I don't know, just a wild guess on my end. But yeah, AOS, do you think another season will come? Because I don't. <laughs> I think they're done with it, man. I think it will come. The question is how long. I would say at least half a year again. I mean, we got like the monthly AOS event now that was announced on today's maintenance stream. Um, because the UCMs, GMs don't know when the next season comes. So this is like their effort yeah. of we know you like AOS rank, or like some people like AOS rank, you don't have to write, but like there's a decent amount of people that like it. This is the closest we can give you that resembles a rank competitive mode system. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would say it's at least six months away again. What would you, what would your perfect system be? I think that's going to be a very interesting question. What would you say, what you, if you, if you were to be, design the system, what would you have it right now? I would say, or like the biggest flaws I would like to fix and that are, I think, fixable within like a week, probably, if you have one dev dedicated to it, it takes less than a week to fix it, would be double classes. If you have a double class comb, if the class is not really good, you it's a 90% lose. If you have a double child... Shout out to Angeli Harp. <laughs> yeah, Angeli, like the double child misery. <laughs> I've seen the screenshots every single day, double child. It's, it's un almost unwinnable, right? But in general, double classes are so easy to fix, right? Like, 
I'm not a software dev, but you can assign every class one specific number, name them from 1 to 28 or however we have by now. If that certain number is in the team, you just don't put another one into it. I can tell you people don't care if they need to wait five more minutes for a match if it is not a double class match. They would prefer mm. that. And 90% of the matches of double classes are legit. You have two of the class in one team and none in the enemy team. It's ridiculous. It's not even like, oh, there's two here and one there. It's just too many. It's two here, zero there. It makes no sense. So double class can be fixed very easy. I'm 100% sure because they did it for triple classes because we used yeah. that one. Yes, yes. Um, and that got fixed. So they can do the same thing for double classes very easily, I'm sure, um, which is a huge flaw of the system. Can um, I interrupt and add one thing on the double yes. classes because I think it's going to be very important. Uh, yeah, you could probably restrict it. And as you can say, five minutes. But do you know what's going to be the best way of fixing double classes? Class balance. That's going to fix it faster I mean, and better. I, I would like to say yes. But you have the issue of double classes, even for classes that aren't like the strongest, right? Like, mm. I would say in the current state, Arena of Solar Valkyrie is not one of the best classes there, right? Like there's five that made it to the top 100, I think. And even I had sometimes three, four matches in a row with double record, right? Yeah. So, like, it's it prone to happen every class. Um, it happens. But, yeah, class balance obviously makes it better. Yeah. Um, the, the map selection slash ban feature that I mentioned, I would like to see because the Ruins of Zoll map is it's literally unplayable for so many classes. <laughs> it's just so bad. I'm sorry. It's just so bad. <laughs> should have been removed <laughs> after Season 1. Or, like, at least the buffs, the map, it's fine. But the buffs yeah. should have been removed after Season 1. Um, I would like to see the DK system change. I'm not sure how exactly. I would probably say a weekly approach because I also don't like the system of, hey, you can't play for two days, you instantly start losing ELO. Like, we had an alliance meetup during the time and I played on a laptop that literally crashed and caused my team to lose and get minus 35 ELO because the laptop crashed, but I still lost less ELO. So for the egoistical player that I was, basically, I lost less ELO inting my team for 25 <laughs> ELO points. <laughs> But only losing 25 ELO in the course of being away for four days yeah. than losing 80 ELO, right? Yeah. It's just a bad system. I would like to see a weekly system, maybe. And then you can also pump up the amount of games that you need so it matches the point lose that you see. So if I play, like, if I only have time on, like, one or two days, if I play Monday, Tuesday, 10 matches or something, I'm good for the week. Like, it's fine. Because then it's still a lot more matches than the two matches you need to play per week currently, right? How about a suggestion um, in terms of instead of a decay introduce a cap and increase this cap uh, in terms of how much points you can get in arena of solaire up until you know the end where you, it's uncapped so you get the people who are afk capped so they cannot push when balance changes hit they there is no disconnect between this so imagine it like this for the first month of arena of solaire you cannot get past 1800s for the second month of arena of solaire can't be as past you know 2k you get the idea and I think this is going to reflect well with patches. What do you think about it? I see one issue with it only. Um, you will have probably even more alt accounts than already because people were rather mm. easy, especially with the placement mm -hmm. system, right? It takes one day to get 1800 ELO if you are somebody that has like played last season, right? If I play, if I go 10 0 in my placements, I will be over 2k ELO. And that takes me 10, days, 10 placements. Mm -hmm. um, and you will have people do that. Um, so I see the issue of people capping out on the ELO and then just spamming other accounts to be all capped on the same ELO again. So they have like four, five, six, seven accounts ready and they just play on the, the highest end and just keep rolling. Um, and it also, on the same part, disincentivizes people to play the game mode again, right? Because if I'm 1800 ELO, for example, if that's a cap, right? Why would I keep playing? I can only lose. I cannot win. I can only yeah, lose. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. And this is already one of the issues or the main reasons why we have other accounts is the incentive to play is like, mm -hmm. you get, I don't know how many solar seals, I'm going to be honest. I don't count them. I don't even know how many I have. I have not used them a single time. The solar seals are legit, whatever. The top 100 rewards are nice, but people lack a solid amount of rewards for playing the game. Or this is the only reason, or like one of the main reasons why we have the alt situation of people having four or five alts is because why would I bother if like the top 30 40 50 you can you mostly lose like you need a 65 percent win rate in the top 50 to keep climbing otherwise you lose because mm -hmm. every match that you win you get like 15 20 elo at best and every match you lose you lose more than 30 elo so that's it's, weird it's a highly disincentivizing system for the top players so yeah 
this is literally deriving out of the and as somebody who has studied such a system before this literally comes from the fact that there is no hidden mmr to keep people together balanced underneath the current uh elo that you're having so what you're having is a flat number which increases and decreases without being tied to a secondary which um makes sure that matchmaking is as adequate and these fluctuations wins versus losses don't happen as much so this also is a reason uh out of sight of just not having enough players it's pretty much it because Down. you yourself probably man if you queue for one day the likelihood of you meeting the very same players on and on and on it's probably happening to you every single day so it's gonna be very hard to fix uh fluctuations in terms of how much you're winning and losing there is like a somewhat method to it let's put it like this right uh. if i have a match with five people and let's say it's five people that i can't really play against because the class is just counter mine but i also at the same point i can't pl play with them because their classes just don't synergize with mine right i will like if my match is done i will grab something to eat grab something to drink and i'll come back and then play again because if i hit the queue instantly again my queue will pop within 10 seconds and there is a 99 percent chance it will be the same five players <laughs> that happens a hundred percent chance i can send you like a screenshot of me getting the same five people for six seven games in a row if you just insta queue again which can be for nice real? if it's a good queue for you but if it's a bad queue for you then you just you stop queuing because you can't it's going to be the same people again and again and again for real because we, we used to do this yeah. playing on 2000 elo plus like let's say there's 40 at the same time right and you have six per match so that only leaves you with six matches that can be played at the same time that is if they that play will be in game that is yeah, that if is, they that play. is if, if, if like 36 people plus play right yeah. and then you will have people being in game depending between like 5 to 15 minutes depending on a match right the chance of them not of 30 out of those people not being in game already while you queue is like super low right yeah. so you will meet the same people unless you wait for a minute you, like you can tell by your queue time if you get the same people or not if your queue pops within 15 seconds you will have the same people <laughs> the same people at they just or, re -queued. at least three or four out of the same people right and if your queue lasts longer than two minutes it's gonna be five new players you know like <laughs> you know by the time you hit the queue button Somebody posted a screenshot somewhere uh, that's definitely not the partner chat where they were in queue for something like 20-ish minutes or something along the way. Oh, it gets a lot worse. It gets a lot worse. Really? Apparently, there was a bug to it happening as well that if somebody cancels the match, you don't find the match afterwards. I, f I, know, I know Choice had it happen, and I know uh... other people as well where they got in queue for over an hour and 15 minutes. Dude. Um, Why stay in it? <laughs> Why stay in it? I mean, the worst part is you can't even do something while you're in the queue, right? It's not can't like I you... can't even PvE on it because I don't PvE on my class. Sure, but can't <laughs> you do... can't you just cancel the queue and requeue? You know, uh, you can, but like for some reason it, it would not work apparently oh. with the bug. I don't know exactly, um, but even outside of the bug, right? I can speak from the experience of mm. last season. If you're like, I think I was like rank twelve at some point. Um, even then, like, I was streaming and I had, like, 30 minute plus Q, and this is just the moment where I go, like, okay, I'm just gonna top, like, dip on my alt and play there because I don't find a match on my main. Because it depends a little bit who's queuing, right? Especially yeah, if yeah. you're, like, in the top 10, 15 rankings or something. The game is most likely not gonna give you another game unless somewhere at least close to you, one account is also queuing that can put in the enemy team to somewhat balance it out at least, yeah, right? Yeah. Like you're still gonna have two people that are like a lot lower than you in your team, and there's still gonna be two people at least in the other team that are gonna be a lot lower. But at least one that is within the reach of plus minus three hundred elo of you is gonna be in the enemy team. And if nobody queues, then you just don't find a match. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. It's uh AOS man, it's it's hard to try and execute queue times with such low player base. It really there it really boils down to how many people are at certain ratings, which is dare I say a result into how little people have or rather the number of how people are just interested in queuing into AOS and that should be incentivized somehow. You know, a big way of fixing this is to make AOS first, unfortunately I'm not really sure if that's unfortunately rather, but first AOS needs to produce some sort of silver man because let's be it if if 
If we measure everything in BDO in silver an hour and we treat content dead or alive only if it gives us adequate amounts based on the current meta of how much that would be, you know, the random number. If AOS is not pulling out silver an hour in a good way, which rewards, of course, people that try to win, which means the higher you get, the more money, right? Then you... It, it, how are you gonna get players in a game when all they value is silver? <laughs> like it's, it's it's playing with people's greed. The same thing happens in RBF. You know, one of the things which caused RBF to die, and this was also my third point, but we're just gonna mention it and just leave it kind of as it is. Uh, one of the main things about RBF is that if RBF is not giving a, an adequate amount of silver, you'll have significantly less people playing it. But then again, because of you know RBF not being well done and properly, people abuse being AFK all the time. But then you know that can be fixed a little bit by participating equals more rewards. You know, the same thing happens with AOS. It's just like Pearl Abyss wants to make people play PvP. It's so fun. Meanwhile, PvP is the least rewarding thing you can do in the game. It's <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, the most. Uh, like t to this day, I'm <clears throat> not sure what exactly speaks against silver rewards basically being based on the rank because it would, for the first part, it would incentivize people to play on their main account that is like high because you get better rewards. Like, let's say for every rank, like, and I mean rank in terms of like every 300 elo, your rank swap swips from like red to purple to blue to incarnate, right? Like, every rank upgrade, you get like a hundred million on average per. Per hour more. Yeah. Right? It's it's a lot, but it's something, right? But like the difference would be like two, three hundred, four hundred million between like better players and worse players. And I'm gonna be honest here. If somebody <laughs> invests years into their class, right? And I personally can speak from like having six years plus on Vecry. I know people that have legit since release, they played one class, right? And they are <laughs> like in those top uh, top rankings because they have been invested thousands of hours into PvP at this point. And they play to their very best limit, which is something that, like, on, on high ELO AOS, I will not be playing longer than four hours because I can tell you after four hours, my performance significantly drops and I will just play worse, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something that you can't... Like, some people can, but I personally can't, for example. Spam the entire day. Plus, it is 100 times harder. I'm sorry for all the PvE players out there. It is a lot harder to play on 2400 ELO AOS than if you're gonna grind in circles. Like... For no sure. matter what class. I know there's classes sure. that are like a lot more APM heavy, but it's a whole different experience. And if I would be able to make half the money that you make grinding, pressing three buttons on an Awakening Witch or an Awakening Guardian or Dosa or something, <laughs> if I would make half the money sweating my balls off in Arena of Soul, I'm <laughs> trying so hard, I would spam that shit the entire day. And so <laughs> this is all we ask for. Let us make like 800 million if we're playing on 2100 or plus. Even, 800 right? for the top million? 100 and I make 800 million per hour. Nobody would complain ever again about the rewards of the game mode. For sure. I mean, it's just. Man, obviously people will abuse it. Obviously they will. But it, it's still, you know. But you can't really, can you? Like, if, if you say, for example, the minimum ELO you need to have to even get silver would be like the, the gold rank, which is something that. 90% of the player base will reach if they invest 10 hours into their classes, mm -hmm. like this, right? So, just like, I think there's only the blue and the green rank below, which, yeah. I mean, I've seen people be in there, but like, if you play, if you win one placement match, you're basically already out, or like two placement matches and you're already out, right? Could be. And Could you will be. win two out of your 10 matches, probably. Could um, be. One of the things which... You can make it only like from gold upwards, and then, as said, right, you, you increase the, the elo the higher you get, and yeah, you're gonna have some win trading going on at the very top, I think the important but then you're also gonna drop one, in Edo again, right? So I think the important way to balance this probably would be to not make it so that the rewards of this particular silver will be distributed at the end, so that the win trading would not be essential at the end of the season, but rather make it if not on a weekly basis, then on a bi-weekly basis, think of it like when it's on Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, you get however games you've played multiplied by however kills or whatever. You get the idea, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of that. Oh. Uh, which is also a different power structure considering how many classes can kill and how many classes are there for different reasons. Shies ain't making a buck, I'm telling you that. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, it's, you know, a AOS requires a couple of things 
first and foremost, in my opinion, just make sure that the game mode functions well in a way where it rewards players participating both onto the rankings of it and onto the silver on hour on it. Make sure that the balance is well done so that it, it lowers, in my opinion, at the very least, it will lower the chances of people going double class. Because let's be fair here, if, if you love your class, let's just say that I want to play my Awakening Mystic, which is not the best AOS class in the freaking game. You know, it's doable, but not the best, yeah? It's doable, but it's there to simply, you know, you know, I I made this joke with uh, last time I was here with with Travesty and Damio. It's like whenever you see an awakening mystic just drop like a freaking pin in RBF or anywhere, you're now you're like, ah, oh, okay, we're not moving. You know, it's it's just this is what the class is. It's a CC bot, and that's what it does. And yeah, just just to shut the AOS topic, because we have kind of 15 minutes yeah. to go into the last few things here. It needs to be incentivized, it needs to be fixed, and also, I still, till this day, do not freaking understand, Jason, why are there queue times? Why, is, why can you queue from 2 to 8 or whatever? Why don't you have it all the time? I would probably say it's not even that bad, because of how low the player base is, the chance of you queuing at, like, let's say, 7 in the morning, you're gonna grab five friends and they're just gonna run it down and boost you up ah, i would say at, ah, at like super yeah. unpopular times you will have win trading a hundred percent going i feel like, you no I agree doubt now. yes okay I, I can see the times even though for some people they're like really bad if they have like a work schedule and stuff so that some people like i know somebody from an a has to play only you because his work schedule just doesn't work out and it sucks a hundred percent but I would say it's for the better of the server if there's at least some sort of queue windows going on because you're going to have more people play from the start to the end mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. you would have at 6 in the morning. I feel yeah. I, I, I was hell-bent on to unlock it. And now as you say this, you definitely changed my attitude on that for sure. I see. Could you imagine like waking up at 3 in the morning and just win, win trading to rank 1 or whatever? <laughs> it probably will happen. Easily. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving into nodes, because it's a topic which I wanted to explore, because it means more to me than AOS would. And uh, have you played the new nodes? Uh, more on release than in the past month, but I have <laughs> played sure. it, yes. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on the other side. I didn't play it on release, but I've played it in the past month. So we can feel each other here and what the hell is happening, because... You know, just to uh, make people a little bit aware, just to get them aware, rather, the new Node War system uh, totally changed, totally, uh, I don't know, even what to call it in particular as a noun, but it, it's it's different, right? And a little bit of the, one of the biggest motif, if not 80% of the reason why the Node War system was reworked was because the old one was an absolute inconsistent pyramid scheme, sorry, an absolute consistent pyramid scheme, which rewarded the number one and everyone underneath would then be punished and punished and punished and punished up until the casual players could not even attend Node Wars just because they couldn't even get a freaking chance. And you see alliances started forming because of this, you get the idea. So the more you work up, it, the, it changes a lot. And as uh, the developer said, the change to the Node War system into the new one, which is significantly different, is so that people have an opportunity to play Node Wars. That's like literally the motif behind it. So that players could go in with their guilds, have fun, enjoy this and that. And... I need to ask some questions. Whose idea was that it would be the last person to shut the fort that would get that thing? Because this is right now what's happening in Node Wars. It's it's not even a, a matter of it's not even a matter of organization. It's not even a matter of necessarily of of, of, of skill. It's almost a PVE slash P thing which happened. They made it more into a PVE, at least in my opinion. But you know, you are I was in Villains up until recently, and I had a blast with these guys. It's just that I suck so bad in PvP to the point where I was just dead weight, rage quit out of it, and it's like, yeah. But yeah, Villains are great. But with that said, what's your experience with the Node Wars at start? How would you rate it? And most importantly, <clears throat> was I on point with this description? Because it's it's kind of, for me personally, to make sure I am. You mean for the old system or the new one? The, the new one, and the, rather the reasoning to change the old with the new. Um, I honestly, for the old system, I cannot speak for tier one at all. I have not played tier one there at all. I've played on tier two and three. I've been working out for 
the Roses Alliance. I forgot how they're called, to be honest. You might know, but whatever alliance Roses were in. Um, that was a lot of fun, actually. It was probably better than our Tier 4 slash Tier 5 note was. <laughs> oh, no, actually, it was Tier 3, 4. Tier 3 and 4. Yeah, it was 3 and 4. And I, I know five, you're yeah. 3 and 4, yeah. Um, yeah. So it was actually more fun than our Tier 5 note was, I'm going to be honest. Um, I would... I was a bit surprised when you said, like, with the whole, you couldn't really get into the system at all because people would just, like, gatekeep out of you. I don't know if that happened on Tier 5 necessarily because Tier 5 guilds were usually like, hey, it's completely dead. Anybody want to play? Anybody want to fight? Like, nobody wants to fight. It's just the, to it's add... The four guilds going on. Just to add, I was saying this for the old system, right? It uh, yeah. Not for the new one. And, and specifically because my experience is similar to yours, pretty much capped. I never played uncapped ever, ever. Just I have no interest in it. It's just ridiculous. But anyways, yeah, just so we're sure. Yeah, I, I can't judge for like tier one and tier two at all. I have not played that at all. Um, Same, yeah, no. Tier three and four, I personally had a lot, had a lot of fun in, and I know, I mean, there was always diplomacy going on. Um, as far as I'm aware, the reason why it got changed was also one of the big issues with Korea is they had like some note war mafia going on again. I'm just gonna use the word. Mm -hmm. There was only one or two guilds on tier five already, so I feel like KR already gave up on the tier five or like uncapped scene completely, basically which um, shows to this day that they gave up on it because now it's completely dead on you as well. It is. I'd say before, the, the Europe uh, uncapped scene was the biggest uncapped PvP scene that was left in the game. <laughs> um, because we at least had like four... I think guilds four guilds, something like that, yeah. I mean, it was four guilds that were competitive and could set up decent 2v2s. If you put in like the next two ones, you could have a decent 3v3 as well going on. There was like weeks and months upon 3v3s on the Southern Garrison node, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there was a way to sort fights for like the top four, six, or maybe even eight guilds, like split up on two regions and on Siege, for example, on a 2v2 or something. There was fight happening. Now it is, it is dead. There it's is dead. One guild. One guild. One guild. They've um, bullied everybody. Uh, it's, it's not about bullying out. Everyone else just gave up because the system is just so not fun for uncapped PvP guilds currently. Like, everything that we've had the past years, everything that these players and, or, or like, shot callers and organizers stand for, and Kiagami for Conquer, uh, Unseen for Unpred, um, but Snooze as our shot caller yeah. back then and opposite, um, like, Fufu for Orca, Everything these guys have played for five years, the entire gameplay for them got removed. Every strategic yep. aspect of the Note War system got removed with that patch. And this is the reason why 90% of these guilds died, like why, why Unpredictable, why Orca, why all of, all of the other guilds, like they, they, they stopped playing Uncapped Note War because well, none of them can compete with Conquer alone and all the other ones stopped doing it because mm -hmm. their gameplay just got removed from the game. They've yep. had it plenty of times, they've been there was so many podcasts going on, like when the system was introduced the first time, as you mentioned with the last thing, the fort, right? Like mm -hmm. they announced, like they had the dev talk where like he put up the whiteboard and stuff. I yeah, was talking I remember about, that. Right? And the moment people heard the last hit, we get the system, like the last hit, we get the fort. It was an uproar going on. Everybody was like, there's no way you can implement this. This is the worst system Absolutely. ever to come to the game, right? And it made it through to this day. It's been like a year since that whiteboard meme, right? Yeah. And everyone said like, the system is horrible. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. And funny enough, I can tell you from um, someone that was on Blue Squadron's United Nations podcast. So there was like, had contact with KR streamers. They don't want it either. <laughs> of course like, they did. Likes. Nobody wanted it because it's it's anti PVP. It's anti organization. It's it's based on let's be honest, luck. Because I'm not even gonna lie to you. The amount of times when I was in villains that we, by complete luck, got a a stick, as, as Santos likes to call it, a stick. Not sure if everybody calls it a stick, yeah. but anyways, I've just been in one guild so far. Uh, so it's like the amount of times we just get it randomly, like ridiculous, just. Somebody goes out there, just, a, I don't know, a mystic with fortitude, just chilling, specifically me, just chilling there in the thicks of it, just could steal it. It's ridiculous as an idea for Jay to, to think that people would say, oh, that's quality content, I can't wait to freaking play it. It's, it's so dumb. And to be fair with you, the new Node War system, at least in my opinion, for as little time as I had on it, uh, to be fair, I've been, I've, I've been in the past month and a half, like, Two, three node wars a week, something like this. I am not even sure what to suggest to fix it. I just can't even find a way. I it's, usually I'm I'm kind of good with at least suggestions to say, okay, maybe this, maybe that. If you do this, but it's like 
you can't really fix it in an adequate way. Everything that you do is going to pull wrong into another direction, which will then be abused. And it feels like the system just needs to be entirely reworked or, you know, bring the old one and work upon that. I don't know. It's ridiculous. I just can't even... It's like, do you yeah, have an it's, idea? It's funny, you know, how this, this, this feeling basically goes for everything. Like, usually, like, PvP players are the first ones to speak up and go, like, oh, you do this and you do this and exactly. now it's fixed, right? Yeah. Like, PvP players like to talk. Like, they're crazy. For sure. Um, <laughs> funny enough, after we got, like, the, the notebook system and, like, after one or two weeks, you would see the most knowledgeable people when it comes to usual PvP. And I'm going to use the example of uh, Kiyagami for Konka and like Unseen for Unpred and stuff. Yeah. Because these are the people that have, or like Fufu for Oka, they are the ones that have organized and like shot called and led the, the leading PvP guilds of the server for three, four, five years straight, basically. So these would be the people that know how their content has been happening and know what to do and stuff, right? And even those people would be clueless on like, okay, like I've, <laughs> I've been in unpredictable and I can tell you, I've never seen unseen speechless when it's like <laughs> two suggestions. And this man went on a podcast and was like, I don't know what to suggest. I can't <laughs> think of something. Like he actually made a forum post now. I don't know if you like, I can send it to you if you want to link. I've it seen a couple of them. Look at it like, put it like this. Um, he made one yesterday again um, with some suggestion and ideas behind it. And as many flaws the old system had with the current system, I feel like it's, and I feel like this goes for the majority of people, is like, it's better to bring the old one back and then try to improve that one. I saw that than post. Than trying I to saw work it, yeah. on the current one. Because the current one has so many base idea issues with the random four timers, the last sitting, the sticks, the, the, the sticks, or like the forts itself being just randomly placed and you can build everywhere kind of. Yeah. It takes away so many like objective parts of how, uh, well, like we used to play the game. I'm not mm. saying like the switch up is necessarily bad, but if you compare what people enjoyed the past four or five years and what they enjoy now, or like don't enjoy it, um it seems that the old system had a lot more potential to go on definitely and i would say while it had as a lot of issues and we've asked a long time for the old notebook system to get changes and stuff and we've suggested a lot of things sadly all of the things that we asked for didn't come with the new system <laughs> and it just made pa felt the need to rework it and just made it worse sadly and i don't personally know of a, of a solution currently i would like to say though that i think the, the system of queuing up for a region, I think especially for tier 1 and the entry of, you don't have to build a base and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I think for tier 1 guilds and the entry level, I think this is actually pretty nice. I don't know from the tier 1's experience, but at least for like all the uncapped people, they go like, oh, this is probably very nice for the newer people to get into the game. Yeah. Because it takes a lot of entry level of like, oh, I don't know how to build a base and the whole thing with like elephants, flame towers, where sure. to put and stuff. Like, it's very complicated to get into if you've never done it before. And I know for, for a fact that like old friends of me that basically just wanted to start out with PvP, they've asked me like, oh, like, can, can you help with like shot calling and can you help out with like, uh, like how do you build a base and stuff, right? And this takes a lot of it away, which is nice. But I would say especially for like the uncapped gears, I mean, we've had years of the game getting easier by removing mechanics upon mechanics upon mechanics. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, like, med kitting, for example. It used yes. to be something that was possible in Note 1 Siege. And it was a huge skill component. Like, sure, it was annoying or, like, abusable to a certain degree. But it was a huge skill component. If one guild was faster at med kitting their own people back than the other one. Like, it, it, would, it was a huge skill factor that could decide the, uh, the game, for example, right? For sure, for sure. Um, we've had, like, years upon years upon years of the game getting easier. And now with removing every objective part to the game of like having a base and like, it's just... It just moves away from easy. PvP and what PvP is supposed to be, at least in my opinion. It's, it's just what I said a little bit earlier. It's how, you know, yeah. it's... You run into a fall and you hit it. Exactly. And it's so stupid because, you know, last time you got to hit this, then get the get the depots, get this, get that. It's like it was it was picking the base apart with an alliance or an idea. And there was a tactical aspect to it. Right now, every single shot call is like hit stick, hit stick, hit stick. And that's it. There's nothing else to it. And, you know, you could complicate the newer system, but that's not going to take away the fact that it has nothing to do with uh, the people that got it. Because let me tell you what's happening. If you get three people 
on let's see a Medea from speaking from personal experience you would get just saying what, what I've noticed you would get uwu villains and behind us and you would have uwu always there's they're always on the stick and you would have behind us just chilling shooting with the hawachi waiting up until 20% for us to go through because we have no chance against them and that's far much more abusive than anything the previous system had because at least you could be diploing it better. At least you could do different things to kind of, you know, pick that base apart. And at least this is my personal experience, which isn't a lot, but still, that's my personal experience. Three people, it's it's not fair. You know how there's this saying, never do business with three people? <laughs> it's exactly that. I mean, there's also like one of the easy reasons why it's like so annoying for the base owner if they get 2v1s. Because yeah. they have no winning conditions in the sense of like, in the old system, right? Like if you are massively stronger than, than the other two attacking you, you could go like, okay, I'm going to send a group of like 20, 30 people to one guild and it will keep them busy to the degree of hey they will not really be hitting me a lot so i can then focus with my other main force yes. on the other guild and just send one platoon over to that guild and they will annoy them enough so they can't actually destroy my base so i'm safe in my base and maybe they even get some hazard done into their base so that forces them back right and then i can like there, there was strategic aspect of like sending groups here and there and stuff but like right now if you're the stick owner you have no winning condition of oh even if i ctg somewhere here or go for the the all-out play of trying to backdoor one base and if i lose then i lose but at least i took them with me out or something it doesn't exist because the enemy has no objective you can take down right that would yeah. remove them from the node one in, in, in that sense you can kill the watch now that they're shooting at you okay but cool like for what for sure for sure it's it's ridiculous it's so much needs to, to change, in my opinion, Jason, because it's, you know, if, if Pearl Abyss are not actively trying to totally murder PvP as an idea in Black Desert, then, you know, I refuse to believe that this is just ignorance in the dev make use. It's just, it's like, you, you can't be this bad. You can't be this bad. This has to be on purpose, right? You can't be this yeah. delusional. There are decades of game development onto how to build these systems how to build these combat modes how to be adequate with them what to do what not to do and you're telling me that a triple a studio is not aware of these things no in my opinion they're doing a continent of the ninth seal on us not sure if you know about this but hey man before pearl abyss had uh, been made the same developers worked on a on a game called continent of the ninth seal you know what they did with this game first they start making uh, sorry, they stopped making um, meaningless, sorry, meaningful PvE and game content, and they stopped doing meaningful PvP game content. Then they milked the game up until there is nothing to it. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, like the the whole <laughs> aspect of trying to kill PvP. It's, I mean, it's been a meme along the PvP scene, but like, I personally refuse a little bit to believe that Perlobis didn't notice how fast. Like, I mean. Korea's unkept scene was already dead. I can 100% see why. For them, it didn't change a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, their tier 5, now tier 3 scene only consisted of one or two alliances, and it only has one left now. But if you compare it to the European scene that had 4, 6, or even 8, depending how far you reach out for Siege, right? Guilds fighting usually, like, we've had 2v2s, 3v3s on a weekly node war basis happening. And it has all crumbled apart with basically announcements of every week, hey, this is really bad. If this keeps going for mm -hmm. another three weeks, one guild is going to quit, and then another one is going to quit, and yep. another one is going to quit. And exactly happened like that until there's only one guild left now, and it has been forced, like foretold, and have it exactly as foretold because, well, like, yeah, if the leader of the guild is like, okay, I will try this for four more weeks, and if nothing changes at all, then I will leave. Then, like, yeah, the guild is dead. Who, yeah. who would have thought? Yeah. Right. And like, I refuse to believe that they don't see the dramatic downfall of, oh, at the start, we've had like eight guilds placed on tier three, and now it's one. And sometimes they don't even place for the free bag because they just can't be asked. For sure. Um, the, the worst part is, I would say, even reverting back to the old system, it wouldn't bring back the people that have left the game for good currently. I spoke I don't about think this for sure. It's like it unpredictable won't. and Orca won't come back with just a revert to the old system. In the current state of the game, and this is a very, very blatant fantasy that I'm going to put out here that <laughs> everyone knows it's not going to happen. But I feel like since this has been going on for so long with no notice at all, every day is like another nail in the coffin. And I feel like the only way that it would bring people 
back to the game, which is what the game needs, because with the current people, the, the tier 3 scene is not happening at all, would be... Well, there's two ways, actually. With the current people, you can make it happen if we get the tier 3 30 men uncapped again. So, like, if mm -hmm. you say, okay, come see if it's going to stay 75 men, and, and Kalfion would be a 30 man cap. This would be one way of maybe bringing people back, because 30 man uncapped content is what people actually enjoy a lot, and it was so I've heard about back this, then yeah, that, they, yeah. that they purposefully shut it down because they wanted people to play 100 man content instead. Like, um, this would be something that would go very, very hard, I feel like. And then, otherwise, if you just want to bring people back in general to the game that have left in the past two, three months with the new system, and I said, this is a blatant fantasy that is not happening, <laughs> would be bring, bring us a dev talk. I know you've been asking for a dev talk, right? I but have. Hear me out. Hear me out, right? What the dev talk needs for the PP scene is, it needs to be a dev talk where before the talk already, they try to contact the NA and the U, because we're the largest region by player base and by revenue yeah. and stuff. Um, we pay for the game, basically. Partners and or guild leaderships of the like top three, four, five, six guilds. Go to them and go like, okay, we're fucked up. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> um... Give us your best ideas, suggestions, fixes, like, and maybe rank them a little bit. And then they're going to invite one or two of these people to whatever dev talk it might be. The, the, the people that came up with these ideas, explain it to them. The devs respond with like, either, hey, okay, we will try it out. We will work on it. We can't do this because of this and this reason. Hold them accountable and stuff. And then once they're done, it would need... Like, the easy solutions, for example, like some of the AOS changes I mentioned earlier of double class and stuff, right, would need to be implemented, I would say, within two weeks-ish, so that people finally, for the first time, actually see, okay, something's happening. Because we've, we've had, like, the, the AOA roundtable where people got invited to give feedback, but nothing ever happened with that. Yeah, so yeah. People would need to see something happening on a decently time manner, I would say. And then for the larger topics like the node war system, right? I don't think you can fix the node war system within two weeks or four weeks or something because people at this point are clueless. It's going to take weeks of patches and iterations of finding out like, hey, so we do this now. Is it better? And then some adjustment here and there, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to take months to fix probably until it's in a good state again. But if you're going to be like, okay, on a two, like, two weekly basis or something, we at least give an update with like, okay, so this is what we came up with. We asked for your feedback. And then they are just like, uh, like handle accordingly to that. I would say this is probably the only way uh, somebody that has was basically about to quit the game as well now after AOS is gone oh, now yeah. and has considered it for, for the past two weeks now to leave after eight years um, and has worked and played in the in the top guilds of the server for, for six years by now. Um, I think this is the only way that you're going to get people that have left already back is the part with like, hey, bring out a dev talk, say, okay, we messed up. This is like, give us your ideas and then actually handle according to them for once in your life because it, I have not seen this happening in eight years of for playing real. the game. For real. You're and right. Just, and, and 30 man uncapped content will also go hard. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It's fun. This is the two, this is the two stuff. It's fun because. I, I otherwise, the game's over, in my opinion. You, you have to find the balance TV. between the number of players and individual player performance. It's why shrinking the numbers of the people present at nodes is, has been kind of working well, if you think in, in retrospect that is. Because individual class choices then matter, aside of just the blob moving like a freaking ant colony, you know? It's, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of that. But uh, Jason, we gotta we gotta cut this man. We gotta stop it. We we've been ranting, we've been talking. <laughs> I got my points out, I'm happy, man. I, I got the points going. For, you I did. Think. You did. Now I have one more question for you. I ran a poll recently, man, on my channel. Not sure if you've seen it, perhaps you haven't, but I asked the question. Do you think Black Desert Online will change for the better? Or you could be neutral on this, or you could be, no, it won't change for the better if, Jason, J. He Kim is fired. Do you want to comment on that? I will be honest. I don't know where at Perlibus Korea the, the PvP issue fails down. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's J. He Kim himself. I don't know if it's... He presented the board! He showed the board! 
I, I don't know if it's a, if it's honestly a translation error between the NA and the U Studio and the KR Studio. I yeah. don't believe that. I don't. Believe I feel it like somewhere from the Korean <laughs> translation of our feedback to the KR Dev in charge, and I don't know if that's J.H. Kim or somebody that's like working below him in any sort of directory at Perlibus. Somewhere in there, people need to change. I don't I know see if Jimmy himself has a lot yeah. of effect, but whoever is in charge of, if there even is somebody in charge of taking in the EU feedback for, and for sure. working with it, because that guy, if he exists, is doing something wrong. For sure. I see what you mean. I see you're kind of neutral about it, which is fair. Absolutely yeah, I would, I would fair. say it's neutral because I don't know how much power J. He Kim himself holds or like how much interest he has in PvP. I don't think he has a lot of interest, so I don't <laughs> think he would change a lot. Like if you get a new CEO that was interested in PvP, I would say then, yeah. But if if not, then I don't think that's the case. He admitted on stream that he played a striker, I think it was, and he was in the cannon. So, or something like that. So he was in the flamethrower, Hawachi, whatever he was. He was operating some sort of war, uh, war okay. machine. Now, uh, Jason, just to, to remind everybody, where can people find you, man? And we'll be wrapping this around. Uh, I would say on twitch.tv slash champion Jason. Not sure how much video content will be happening, oh, though. I've got to be honest. I, I really don't know currently with the state of the game how much I'm going to hey, be man, playing. I feel it. you. Um, I've been diversifying my content as well. Instance. Yeah. You just I gotta go. Try out other games too. What, Throne and Liberty that's, angle? That's is this it? Uh, I haven't looked into it. I will try it out because I've seen every video PvP related Discord server talk about it during the open beta. Yeah. And I guess there has to be something on it, which is sad because from what I heard, the game has way less potential than BDO. But significantly, like, if, it, if it's done better, then it's still better than BDO currently. It's, it's not what that it's do? it's not that it's done better. First, it's fresh, which provides opportunities. Second, it it shows that the devs are listening, proactively listening throughout alpha and beta. It's like the game has went through three or four iterations for half a year or something like that out of hardcore player feedback. And it just just this alone is an environment which could help PvP grow. And in general, just to give you a little bit of, a, of an idea, because for the past one or two days, I've been heavily trying to research Throne and Liberty as well as if I want to play it, um, if I would like to play it. The, the, the game is entirely revolving around guild activity, all of it. So this means you're, it's guild PvP node wars, basically, and they said that yep. they will be having some sort of a similar to how we have nodes and then we have siege, and uh, PvE stuff will be basically apparently like something like raids and then there's going to have something like bigger thing, but it's mass PvP, basically. And, and I'm 100% sure I will see a lot of the people that I've met in the past three years in video. <laughs> you, will, you will see that. I will see a lot of familiar names. <laughs> it, it, you know how two years ago when Lost Ark, or like three years ago when Lost Ark released, everybody in video went there? It's happening right now, the same thing no. with Throne of Liberty. And it's in Throne of Liberty biggest interest to keep those players, unlike what Lost yeah. Ark did. They just got to uh, not mess up up harder than Pearl of Us, and I think they're good to go on the <laughs> First time I believe the game is gonna uh, take away BDO players for longer than a month. Same, same. I'm, I'm with you on this one. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this, Jason. I will upload this as soon as possible, dude, and uh, yeah, much love. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me.